Hey, what's up? So welcome back to Getting Started with Deep Learning. This is now section five, where we're going to be looking at object detection and classification. So not only are we trying to recognize objects in an image, we're trying to also localize them in that image. So this is kind of a step above what we did in the previous section. So in this section, we're going to firstly take a look at the TensorFlow Object Detection API. So TensorFlow has produced this API where you can just kind of interact with a simple function calls and it will perform neural network. Um, it will run neural networks on your specified input. So you don't have to go into the kind of lower level details and implementation where we're actually defining the model of the network. So it's a lot easier and cleaner to use be firstly having a look at that and there's a lot of pre-trained models that have already been um, provided by tensorflow so they're quite easy to use that you can just kind of use them out the box um, we're then also going to be looking at well creating our own neural network so training our own network with the object detection api and, and to do this we're going to have to first create a new data set and then we're going to train with this new data set. So we're actually going to be running the training as you would do for your target application. And then we're going to look at finally deploying our new model. So how we actually use it in an example application. So first up, um, we're going to be looking at testing the pre-trained model with the object detection API. So this is the first video where we're just going to have a look at what they've already done so far. So if you navigate to GitHub, so on your Internet Explorer or Firefox or whatever you're using, and so you go to GitHub and then TensorFlow Models is the repo that we're concerned with. And basically in here is kind of a number of different models that have already been implemented in TensorFlow and are available for us to use. So what we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to need to go ahead and just download. You can either download it as a zip or you can just do git clone. So here you can see, copy this. And then if you are gonna use git, you go to wherever you're gonna, you want the file and then do git clone and paste in the repository address. And then that will affect, that will just download the latest um, repo from GitHub. So let's just have a look around. So in here, you know, the main one we're concerned with is going to be research. So if you go into research um, and then there's also there's all these other different um, kind of areas of computer vision and deep learning that people are in interested in. And um, so, you know, you might something might catch your eye and I do recommend that you go and look at yourself. So there's things about like autoencoders is a type of neural network um, that some people use. And we are concerned about object detection. So if you go on object detection and in here is what we're concerned about. So this is going to be kind of the main folder that we're going to be working from but i have also copied all of the relevant so in here you know you can see this creating a kind of readme based upon this whole api so what we're going to need to do is this folder structure will be exactly the same once you've cloned or download the models repo so but it's easy, often easier just to look at it on the GitHub website. So firstly, we're gonna to have to make sure, we're gonna to have to install some things as often you expect. So here, you know, there's a ton of dependencies that you need. And obviously this is assuming you've got TensorFlow. Uh, so this is specified, you need TensorFlow 1.9, but it's not hard to just upgrade if you've got a lower one. Um, so basically make sure, you know, that you've either got all these, or if not, we're gonna just look at the instructions on how to install them. So here, you know, there's a very easy way 
were very easy instructions into how to install it. You know, I'm not going to show you it being installed because you just run these and it will just install exactly as you want. So make sure you know, I just copy and paste all of these into your terminal and then, you know, that will be problem solved. So what you're going to need to do is you're then going to need to download the Coco API. Now, we'll talk a bit about Coco in the next tutorial, but basically it's kind of a computer vision data set that provides a lot of relevant information and corresponding code. So make sure you know you've also cloned the Coco API and then also copy it to wherever you're wherever you put your models research folder. So make sure you've done that step. You then need to um, do a protobuf compilation. Now you can try it with this one if you've already got protobuf, but the version I had already installed on my computer wasn't um, up to date enough. And then I had some linking errors later on when I tried to run the example. So I would recommend that you do the manual protobuf compiler. And that's, it's very, very easy. You know, you just um, download it and then unzip it and then finally run your local version of your protobuf. So that's kind of very easy. You know, this is all very straightforward. A lot of people trip up when going through this. So it's important, you know, that you follow the steps correctly and do exactly as the installation says. So yeah, make sure you've run it. And then finally, you need to make sure that you add your libraries to the Python path. This is very important. Um, and you know, I've often been bitten in the past when I've forgotten to do that. And then you're worrying why um, Python can't find the appropriate files. You could quickly run this test just to make sure it works. If not, then you know you haven't, you've made some mistake here and it'd be best just to go through and do it again. So with this in mind, let's have a look well, how the current model works. So what you're gonna to need to do in the folder that you should have been given by Pact, there should be a script called evaluate.py. Now this is a modified version. So here's evaluate.py. So this is a modified version of a Jupyter file that is provided by TensorFlow um, in the models application but i just thought you know it's best it's nicer almost sometimes it's nicer to have it as a script you can just run rather than starting a jupyter um, server so you know as with always there's lots of things to import um but don't worry too much about these you know a lot of them aren't as necessary for your application as you might think so here you know just some sit check just to make sure we're in the right tensorflow version and then so here we're going to download a model off the internet. So this is the model we're going to use. So that's the name of the model. And then we've just got a download link here. And basically what it's going to do is it downloads this model. And then we use the frozen graph, which is the PB file containing all of the weights. We then also have a path to labels file which basically gives the corresponding label number a name, which we can interpret. So here is just, you know, some simple stuff about downloading um, and then building the graph. So here is actually, so this is in graph mode now. So graph construction, and then here we're downloading. Simple auxiliary function just to load an image as a NumPy array. And then, so this is a file of testing images, which I'll show you in the folder in a minute, Not in the corresponding information in test images, which you were given. And then so this is a function that's gonna run inference on a single image, but we'll come back to that. So this is kind of the main function. So just for all of your images in your test image, in the test images directory, open them, load them to an array, and expand the dims dimensions. And then we're gonna run output, for, well, run in for a single image. And looking at single image, 
here, you know, we're creating the graph. And basically what this does is for each of the keys, we're then going to go through and basically find, you know, what the what these corresponding keys are and then output it. So, you know, we're going to have the number of detections, where the boxes are, the probability that that is that class, because, you know, it's never completely sure um, which class and then also a mask. So, and then it kind of, you know, kind of goes through and basically extracts all the right, all the corresponding tensor information from the network. And then finally, you know, you have your output basically compiles a dictionary with all of the corresponding information. Um, it is a little bit complex, you know, whether you want to go through and pick it apart is entirely up to you, but, um, that's basically how the information is extracted. And then you just return the output dictionary. So that's it, it's very simple. And then finally here, we're just um, plotting some stuff on the array. So let's go and have a look at it running. So if you just do Python, evaluate.py, let's just make sure you can see that. So Python evaluate.py, and if you run it, it might take a while, but that's fine, just let it work its magic. And then there we go. So here you can see that it's classified you know, person 64%, motorcycle 56%, not sure how right that is. Um, I can't even really tell. But you know, you can see it's classifying reasonably confidently the right amount. It's obviously making some mistakes, that's not a bowl. Um, but there is a person in that area and there's also a dog, even though it has actually in fact classified two of them. So you see it's not perfect, but it is, does a reasonably good job. Um, but yeah, so that was it so far.